What's up, sports fans? This is the Lucas Ross Sports Channel. It's time to continue my 2023 schedule preview slash projected records for the 2023 college football season. And we continue them with the Maryland Terrapins. Here was a schedule last year for the Maryland Terrapins. The overall record for this team going 8-5 overall last year in 2022 and 7-5 overall in the regular season. You look at who they played in the non-conference. This team played Buffalo, Charlotte on the road, and then SMU. So they didn't really have too tough of a non-conference schedule. Um, they had to go on the road to face Charlotte. But SMU was one of those tough teams. But other than that, they took care of business in all three of these non-conference games. And then you look at who they played outside of the Big Ten East. They played Purdue, Northwestern, and um, they also played Wisconsin on the road. So they didn't have too tough of a draw there out of the Big Ten West. Of course, Purdue ended up winning it all last year, or actually in the Big Ten West, I should say. So um, Purdue was basically their toughest um, you know, Big Ten West game. Obviously, Northwestern wasn't as good as we um, you know, think they were going to be. And then Wisconsin on the road, they lost that one. They had a pretty tough stretch there in the month of November. Uh, the schedule kind of got tougher on them. They had to play Wisconsin, Penn State, both on the road. Then they played Ohio State, but they really competed in that game. That's a game they probably could have won there. But other than that, Maryland had a pretty decent year last year. Let's look now ahead to 2023 uh, for this Maryland team. Here's a schedule for 2023 for Maryland. Uh, the, and you see who they'll play in the non-conference. They'll play Townsend, Charlotte, and Virginia here out of the non-conference. So they'll play a Power 5 team in the non-conference this year. Of course, that's Virginia. That game is at home. A Virginia team that's not really that was not really good last year, and they're kind of in a mess right now. But Townsend and Charlotte is not too tough of a non-conference teams. Uh, they played Charlotte last year on the road. This time they'll play them at home. And you look at who they'll play outside of the Big Ten East. Um, they'll play Illinois. Uh, they'll get that game at home. Then they'll play Northwestern on the road. And they also will play Nebraska on the road. So not too tough of a draw there once again out of the Big Ten West. Illinois will probably be their toughest one. That game was or actually that team got really good last year and they were eight and four last year as well, or eight and five, I should say. Eight and four in the regular season, so that will be a draw they get. But other than that, it's not, you know, a too tough of a draw out of the West. Of course, no Purdue on that schedule, so that's the good news. But you'll have to play Northwestern and Nebraska. Well, let's go game by game now for this Maryland team. So they'll play Townsend and Charlotte to kick off the month of September here. And then they'll play Virginia here on September the 16th. So you get three non-conference games uh, to kick off the year in the month of September. Then they'll head on the road to face Michigan State. Uh, that will be a tough road game there. Michigan State obviously not really good last year, but this could be a really tough test. You never know about them. Indiana at home after that on September the 30th. Uh, this will be a home game for Maryland. And then they'll play Ohio State on the road. A team they really competed against last year, but this time they will play this one on the road. That will be a tough, tricky test there uh, for this Maryland team. And then they'll play Illinois after that on October the 14th. Could be an interesting back-and-forth game. I think this will be a trap game for Maryland if they were ranked in the top 25 by this point. And then they'll get a bye week after that game. And then they'll play Northwestern on the road, one of the worst teams in the Big Ten from last year. And then they get to the month of November. They'll play Penn State here at home on November the 4th, a game that they could probably win against. And then they play Nebraska on the road, but they have a really tough schedule here in the month of November. They get, you get Penn State at, on November the 4th, then Nebraska on the road, and then they'll play Michigan after that on November the 18th. Then they'll play the Rutgers here on the road. You don't have to play back-to-back -back road games, which is the good news for this Maryland team. You don't have to play any back-to-back -back games, so that's the good news there. But the November schedule is really tough for them. But other than that, the schedule is not too tough. But, you know, Ohio State and Michigan State both on the road and then Nebraska on the road. But at least you get Michigan at home. That's the good news there. So Maryland, a pretty favorable schedule for them to have a really good season. But uh, Michigan, or actually that November schedule will really be tough by the time they get into the month of November. Let's now get a projected record for this uh, Maryland team. Uh, this is the scale I use for my projections if it's a 1% game. Those are games where Maryland has no chance of winning in. 20% uh, games, a couple touchdowns, they'll be an underdog. A couple touchdowns of an underdog, 40% in the yellow. Uh, they'll be about a touchdown um, underdog in that game. And then 50-50 games, these will stay in the white. Uh, games where they can go either way, uh, in the purple, 60%. These are games where Maryland's going to be favored by a touchdown. 
80% in the blue. These are games where Maryland's going to be favored by a couple touchdowns. And then the 90% games in the green, these are games where Maryland's going to be favored uh, by more than three touchdowns in the green. And that's what we always start with. We're going to start with the green games here for Maryland, the easy wins here. And I think you got two of those on the schedule. It's the two non-conference games here, two out of the three non-conference games with Townsend and Charlotte. You get both of these games at home, so you don't really have to go on the road to face them. Uh, these are not group of five teams or anything like that. They played Charlotte last year, so I'm going to count this one as a green game. Um, this will be a home game for Maryland, but they should really take care of business in both of these games. They have no business to lose both of these games on September the 2nd and September the 9th. Let's go to the blue games now, the games where Maryland's going to be favored by a couple touchdowns. And I got one game on the schedule. It's Virginia here on September the 16th. Uh, Virginia, like I said, is in a mess right now. They were not one of the worst teams in the ACC last year, but they were really close to that. I know they had that tragedy last year, but this team, that they lost a lot of guys in the transfer portal anyway. So, yeah, this will be a um, this will be a, probably a couple touchdowns of a favorite for Maryland. I mean, they get the game at home, so that's the good news there. If this was on the road for Maryland, I would probably put it in the purple, but I'm going to stick with it and put it in the blue. We now go to the games where Maryland's going to be favored uh, by a touchdown in the 60% category, and that's in the purple. And I think you got three of those on the schedule. I think you got Indiana here at home, Northwestern on the road, and Rutgers on the road as well. And um, I think Indiana is going to be a little bit of a team this year that maybe has a downfall year again. I just don't know how good that Indiana team will be this year. Uh, maybe last year was just a fluke for them, but I'm going to still favor Maryland in this game. And this is also just based off of where the teams were uh, from a year ago. And then Northwestern, obviously one of the worst Big Ten teams in the country last year. But um, I think this will still be a purple game because it is on the road. But if this was a home game for Maryland, I would probably put him in the blue uh, same thing for the Rutgers. Um, if this was on the, if this was at home for Maryland, I would probably put this one in the blue as well, in the 80% range. But I'm going to put both of these games in the purple on the road at Northwestern and the Rutgers, and then Indiana. I'm going to keep that one in the purple as well. And other, I think those are all the games that Maryland will be favored in by at least a touchdown. All right, how about the games where Maryland's going to be an underdog in? I don't have any red games for this team, but I do have an orange game and a yellow game on here. We'll start with the 20% games um, on here. And I think you've got one game on that schedule, and that's Ohio State here on the road. I know Maryland competed with Ohio State last year. It should be in the yellow, but I'm going to stick with it and put it in the orange. It's obviously a tough place to play at Ohio State. I think Ohio State is going to be a little bit different this year, but I still think they're going to be really good enough to really defeat Maryland, and they'll still be a really big touchdown favorite. Not like a big touchdown favorite, just a couple touchdowns of a favorite. But it could change by the time we do those predictions in May, and I could probably make Maryland a heavy underdog in this game by the time we do those predictions, and they can really compete in this game. But this will this one will be on the road, so... I'm kind of expecting probably a game that, you know, Ohio State should win big as of right now. But I'm going to stick with it and put it in the orange. All right, we go to the games now where Maryland's going to be a heavy underdog in in the 40% category in the yellow. And I got one game as well on that schedule. That's Michigan here on November the 18th. And this is a game that I probably could have put in the orange if it was on the road. But I'm going to stick with this one and put it at home in the yellow. I think, you know, they have a really good shot to beat Michigan here. Like I said, when Maryland competed against Ohio State, they have a chance to do that again, and this time it could come against Michigan. They could probably perhaps pull off an upset here. Uh, you never know. Maryland could really be su a surprise team in the Big Ten this year and probably the fourth best team in the Big Ten East by, right behind those top three uh, with Ohio State, Michigan, and Penn State. So, but I'm kind of expecting Maryland to compete in this game. I really am kind of expecting them to compete against Michigan because it's a home game for them. Uh, they will have home field advantage, but I think Michigan will still be at least favored by a touchdown, and Maryland will still be an underdog in. And I think that's the only game that they'll be an underdog in, a heavy underdog. And the rest of the games here on the schedule for Maryland, Michigan State on the road, Illinois at home, Penn State at home, and Nebraska on the road. I think these are all 50-50 games. Michigan State, we don't know what that team is going to look like. Uh, we don't know how good they're going to be, but this will be a tough road game. Illinois could be a trap game. That's why i got to put it in the white. They were really good last year as well. And Penn State, I know this is a team that was really good last year, but I'm going to still 
count this as a 50-50 game just because of home field advantage. It's a really tough one to call. And Penn State will lose a lot of talent from last year, including, you know, some really good guys from that team from last year. So as of right now, I'm going to put Maryland here as a 50-50 game against Penn State. And then Nebraska on the road, it's really a tough one here. I probably could have put this one as a favorite for Maryland. But Nebraska wasn't that good last year, but we just don't know how good they're going to be. But it's obviously a tough place to play. That's why i got to put it here in the white. And I think these are all 50-50 games. How many games do I see them winning out of that schedule or all these 50-50 games? I see them winning two out of those four games. So maybe they can beat both Illinois and Penn State at home and maybe lose to Michigan State and Nebraska on the road. So I think this schedule really sets up nicely for Maryland to have a pretty good season, just a decent year, not like one of those Big Ten teams that just comes out of nowhere and goes to the Big Ten championship. Uh, let's get to the projected record for this Maryland team. So if you look at the games that they're favored in and also the games that they are, um, you know, underdogs in and also the 50-50 games, uh, the overall projected record for this Maryland team comes out to be 8-4 and four for 2023. I think that's a pretty decent projection right here for this Maryland team. I can probably see them winning 7 or 8 or 9 games this year. I think worst case scenario for this team would probably be maybe 7-5, and five, maybe 6-6. Six and six. It's possible they go 7-5, and five, though. And then nine and three, I think, is the best case scenario for this team. But I want to guys, I'm going to let you guys know what you think about this Maryland team down in the comments below. But and that's my overall projected record for this Maryland team, um, eight and four for 2023. Let me guys know what you think about this Maryland team. What do you think their projected record would be? What do you think their worst case scenario would be? What do you think their best case scenario would be? And stay tuned here for more sports content on the Lucas Ross Sports Channel.